Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alien vs. Predator Galaxy podcast. This regular host, Aaron Percival, a.k.a. Corporal Hicks, and joining me, as always, are... Adam Seller, a.k.a. Ridgetop. Eric Adams, a.k.a. Xenomorphine. And I'm already cringing internally, because this episode is going to be no editing. Uh, it will only be some post-production automat... Oh, you fucking dickhead. Oh, no. Uh, po- post-production <laughs> automation... <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. I had, I had, I had Zella's breathing, and then I had your lip smacking within the first ten seconds, and I'm already like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Um, so yes, obviously, because this one is, you know, a time, time sensitive uh, discussion. Um, throwing this one up, pretty much no editing. Um, this is episode 180, and we're a bunch of. Uh, you know, early 20s space salvagers discussing the alien Prome- oh, alien Prometheus, alien yeah, Romulus. Prometheus. Thank God it's not that. <laughs> you know what? I'm still genuinely surprised that uh, Prometheus hasn't been rebranded alien Prometheus. I don't know. I don't know about that. Although I, I, I have been seeing a number of uh, defenses recently of uh, Prometheus and Covenant on, on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. So which know, is... maybe they're being reevaluated. <laughs> well, that's something I've always had a said core as well. thing. The way they're not following. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're, they're very different to the main series, yeah. and you know, we had like spin-off groups on Facebook, and um, you know, the various socials and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, Steve Aspel, you know, the um, the big head honcho at, at studios commented on the sort of comments they'd been seeing yesterday after the trailer release about, you know, how people have been reevaluating in quotation marks, you know, Prometheus and Covenant and stuff like that, which is, uh, which is funny. I'm like, no, it's not. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I still love Covenant. I still really love Covenant for the first two acts. But uh, we are obviously talking the Romulus teaser trailer. And uh, we're also going to lay it out there first. We're not talking about the spoilers, the leaks, or anything like that. Not in a specific sense, but we might mention it in a broad um, impressions, but no details, nothing like that, because apparently we we hate spoilers on the internet now. So we're not we're not gonna we're not <laughs> gonna talk about that. Um, I don't want to wind myself up, and I also don't want to start talking about the background politics of all this bullshit, and have to do work editing things so uh yeah broadest and, uh, broadest um, terms only okay just to clarify because there's still a lot of comments i'm seeing on youtube and elsewhere this is the film there is still a tv show in production they're both sort of <laughs> concurrent projects this is the film one this the other thing is still yet to yeah filthy casuals god yeah. How can they not know the difference between Noah Hawley's thing and I mean, um, Fede Alvarez's? Thing. But yeah, this is the movie that's going to come out. Yeah, yeah. So it's this bit of, and, and not just the trailer came out. You know, we had the teaser poster, and we also had a lot of interviews. I say a lot, like four or five um, interviews with Fede Alvarez, um, discussing the trailer, discussing the the film, and various bits and pieces to do with it, which is exciting. I'm excited, but <laughs> how? That's just me. How about you guys, uh, Eric? How are you? Um, you know, how are you feeling about go, the trailer? Go, go to Adam first, because I'm curious to see what Adam's view of this is. I I'm, heard I'm also excited. Hey, it's it's always an exciting time when a first teaser drops, even with even with Covenant. I was like, I was hyped with that teaser. Uh, and you know, Prometheus teaser needs no introduction, of course. It was like one of the oh, best trailers was, of all time. But that was a so whole this... saga unto itself as well, you know, <clears> leading, leading yeah. up to the release with all the leaks from the survey website and everything like that. So this, yeah, this did not have. Um, I can't remember if Prometheus had any viral teasing before the trailer, but this had like nothing, and everyone was just waiting for something. Hey, that's a lie. To drop. That is a lie. Well, a clapboard, okay, from last summer. No, I meant um, Fede's uh, very, very clever little tease. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the day before the, the teaser trailer dropped, we had a uh, a black 
image that said tomorrow. But if you pumped up the brightness, you could see a xenomorph uh, looking right at you. So that was pretty cool. Um, but I think that the teaser trailer was great. I think it was very effective, very spooky. Um, did Should we just watch it? You want to just watch it and then we can talk we about it? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. I'm going to throw it on. I'm going to leave this in for the audio version as well. Once I've unmuted it and started it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fucking love siren. it. Fucking yeah. love it. Very effective, uh, very effective teaser. You know, sometimes you have the teasers like the first AVP where it just shows you the tiniest of glances, but this like it, it showed a lot, but it was also still pretty short. We only see one shot of the adult xenomorph. Um, all those face huggers just mobbing down the corridor was pretty cool. Um, that well, pulsating well, we... like freaky music was good. Yeah, it was just a, an awesome teaser. Go on then, Eric. Right. Um, my view of this commercial here, this trailer, is this shows, and just to qualify my view, I've always said, like, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, especially with a view to what Prometheus gave us, because however you like it, the commercial was unfortunately nothing like the end result. <laughs> Um, but this was what I was hoping to see from this director, based on what we've seen in Evil Dead, and um, especially Don't Breathe. I would say Don't Breathe mm -hmm. is the one to see in terms of what he would do with an alien film. We got not just the authenticity with set design and the colour palette too, and the lighting, those are two key things from an alien film. Um, but here we got very much a sense of the tension, which I'm really hoping to see here. And also, there are some hints of bringing back the disturbing psychosexual stuff, which has been absent in my view since 1986. The last time we had that was probably Ripley and Newt with a facehugger attack, ironically, facehuggers here. I've wanted to, to see a mass facehugger attack in an alien film for a long while, and we are finally getting it here. Um, yeah, as a commercial, this worked for me. I do think the initial thing where it sweeps across and we see the blood on the cryotube, I suspect because of the way it was filmed, I think that was done especially for the advert, I don't know, but it reminded me a lot of the um, AVP 2010 commercial for the game, where it, you just showed a lot of um, Wayland yutani stuff and there was blood splatter over the, you know, the happy 1950s family friendly thing saying building better worlds it reminded me a lot of that in a good way because i liked that commercial um yeah this did what it's meant to it's generated hype a lot of good word of mouth and i'm fully behind this if this is what the film is like um yeah i'm looking forward to it i, I i'm hoping this is will do for alien what prey did for Predator, that's my uh -huh. that's what I'm getting from this. It's going back to the build tension, make it a chase, make it about the um, the elements of the script which made Alien what it was. And if they do bring back that kind of disturbing Lambert type stuff in this, all the better because that is what makes Alien distinct from all the other movie monsters out there and we've been lacking that make the alien disturbing again <laughs> i thought you were going to do the maga thing there but yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's you, you... that kind of thing i'm sure somebody will make that into a, a meme make the alien disturbing <laughs> again so i 
have been again talking broadest terms. Mm-hmm. All the leaks have me excited. Yes. You know, a lot of a lot of what we've heard of the leaks are things that are very much up my street. Um, as an alien fan, as a person, as a movie fan, all that kind of stuff. So the question for me then comes down to execution. And you know, and this teaser trailer is our first look at that execution. And as a teaser trailer, this is bang on. You know, we say teaser, it's supposed to tease, it's supposed to incite excitement, it's supposed to give you a taste of, of what's in store for you. And you know, I think there's an art in there's an art the uh, trailer editing is an art unto itself. It is um, the original alien trailer. Uh, teaser trailer bang on you know prometheus say what we want about the actual film that first prometheus teaser trailer was an absolute banger as well this is as well you know when when we had covenant's first trailer that thing fucking spoiled like the majority of the deaths in the film and and you know a lot of did it really spoil the narrative i can't remember but it's it certainly spoiled a lot of the deaths in the film when it came to this, you know, the, that first pan over this gorgeous Nostromo-esque, Sevastopol-looking um, set, you know, corridor with the alien sirens blaring and this voiceover, this panicked voiceover uh, with, you know, multiple different characters. And it pans over the, the blood in the cryotube. I was like, this is fucking perfect. This is brilliant. This is this is a fantastic little tease. And I scrolled to the bottom to check how much longer was left, thinking it was going to be this nice little 30 second long teaser trailer. Uh, just to, you know, just to find there was a, another half to it. Um, I would have been happy with it if it had cut there, to be honest, because I think that that was a very good tease. <laughs> but then what we got with the rest of it was perfect because it was so much out of context but still alien and very interesting you know sort of shots um i, I could have done without the face hugger leaping on eileen Wu, um you know because that's potential spoiler death territory there um but like you know getting the getting the creature shots um getting the set the fucking set design and the production design is wonderful you know it teases the new i say new the old pulse rifle of course you know, perfect teaser trailer, in my opinion. And I am very fucking excited. Very excited after this one. It's certainly done its job. And I can't wait to hopefully see more on Alien Day. Yeah. It's, um, it's, when, oh, sorry. It's been making the rounds, too. Like, I think it's number one trending trailer on, on YouTube right now. Last time I looked, it had about 7 million views and that was just on the the 20th century studios channel so um yeah it's it's cool to see all this excitement online for this and i i pretty much agree with everything both of you said it was just very effective it felt very evil dead 2013 in terms of that just really dark foreboding vibe but those sets looked straight out of something from the original alien or alien isolation um interestingly enough the ship uh someone on twitter who goes by the space shipper uh discovered the name uh no it or... was it was it was on our boards oh was it okay yeah the, well, the guy he credits is, not, <laughs> is nightmare asylum oh gotcha gotcha so it's the corbelon four which i guess is another conrad name so yes um... he was um in the nostromo novel he hmm. cool. was a so character in nostromo we see this little scavenger ship approaching the the station with this really cool like uh belt of the planet like um ring i guess um yeah very saturn-esque um could that wasn't there a ring, ring around the um lv426 uh Kalpamas. yeah the, the yeah, gas the giant there was yeah. but they were maybe landing on the moon it's, maybe it's that area possibly or maybe it's just evocative visually i mean mm. there is a lot in the trailer that is visually evocative of the rest of the films, whether that's in design language, um, fitting into the universe, or straight up oh, yeah. visual reference I mean, it, to a scene from Aliens. 
what we've got here is ironically very as a whole it's actually very much how i envisage when we used to talk about neil Blomkamp's possible alien five the way this is shot and lit is very much in keeping with how i visualize that might be um but the key part for this as a trailer is as you mentioned about the editing um now if the film is edited like this fantastic but um one of the reasons this hits so well is because it's kind of mirroring how Alien itself was. You had that long sweeping shot, but then you get that hint of blood and it's full on blood. It doesn't look at all fake or CGI. That looks like how blood would drench something. And then it hits and then you get those quick shots, quick shots, quick shots. And there's even a very interesting hint of zero G, which um, Aaron well, and me have often talked about. We'll, we'll, we'll start but, skipping through the trailer. Yeah. And but we'll there's, start talking um, about the specific moments. The other interesting thing about this, which really gave me hope, is that in one of the interviews that the director has given, he did say specifically about this. I really tried to show the minimal amount. And he says he hates it when adverts give plot points away so i'm hoping that all the stuff we get you also said that none of his favorite shots are in this which is also very mm -hmm. interesting whatever we have seen here is they're not the money shots which is fantastic i'm hoping that all the commercial stuff we get is as ambiguous in nature as this is where you go oh i want to see more but it doesn't give anything away which is so difficult these days um if they keep that up, it's it's going to be a very successful marketing campaign. Um, and I'd like to find out who edited this advert because I don't know if he did the advert that he would have given a, um, like a green light to it. But um, yeah, hats off to whoever did the editing for this because this is really good editing. Yeah. Um, again, just just a very effective teaser. Um, Responding to what you said about that first shot, Eric, where it slowly goes down the corridor and we see the blood in the cryo tubes. Yeah. Um, from what I've been told, that's in the film. It's just oh, they okay. added extra background audio that's not part of that scene yeah. for um, for the teaser. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting position because I think you and Aaron have both dived into spoilers, whereas I've been trying to avoid them. We'll see how successful I am with that. Um, Not because I want to, but because, you know, moderating the message boards, it's a yeah. hazard of the... Uh, so, you know, that that's that's one of the things as well. Yeah, I'd rather um, not. But... I, I... I wouldn't police the release of spoilers, but... To me, it's very important that what we report on is accurate and legit. I would very, I very much don't want to share misinformation or baseless rumors. Um, so I have to where where I can, I I do have to sort of spoil myself, which is unfortunate in its own way. But damn, I still get excited regardless. And like I said earlier, you know, it's it's the execution then that that then comes afterwards that is still fucking exciting. But let, let's start digging in then. Let's let's talk about the um what was it, the Cora band, did we say? Yeah. Adam. Or I think. Um yeah. well, Cor Corbalon. Cor Corbalon four, I think. Yeah, cool little cargo ship. We can see these clamps on the underside that are attached to this orange container. It looks like the cockpit is on the upper right hand side at the rear of the ship. Kind of reminds me of those cargo lifts we saw in both uh, Covenant and uh, Aliens Fireteam Elite, and we can see the, the boarding door right on the front of the ship. Yeah. It's a um, nice angled sort of hull to it as well. It gives a lot of Nostromo um, design language, uh, which is also cool. I assume I this... good it is to see those windows with slits in an Alien film again. I really miss those. <laughs> see a lot of those in there. I assume this light coming through those windows there, that's probably them approaching that, the station. Yeah. yeah. That's a good shout. But I mean that this this first uh, shot of, of the pullback through the corridor, you know, that just that just screams alien to me. Uh, whether it, you know, yeah. it's it's the original uh, production design and set design of the Nostromo or um 
you know, we associate a lot of it with you know, isolation now as well, because isolation really took what was in uh, the, you know, the first film and expanded it. You know, it made a city in space out of those original designs. So the, the two are forever sort of linked uh, in my mind now. And, and just this little pullback. And then the sirens start going. I was fucking grinning I, like a fool the, I when have, I watched it the first time. I have to say, I really now I don't remember if this was in isolation. If it wasn't, I really like it as an addition. You've got these um, monitors mm-hmm. on the sides. I really because they've got it's clearly like slightly malfunctioning video, and you see with the, the VHS scan right. Yeah, but also, also if you'll notice, it's that same sort of blue and black color palette on them as you got with the um, Colonial Marine sort of helmet mm-hmm. cameras. And on the dropship as they're sort of surveying Hadley's hope. And that is, it's not about member berries. It's just about getting the setting authentic. Yeah, that feels like something you would see as like a monitoring station for engineering crew and stuff. They would have these little monitors as you go down the corridors. It's, it's, it's not just visually satisfying, but it's always about form follows function. So it's just nice to see that kind of stuff there as well these little innovations mm. i don't i don't consider this kind of stuff member berries no, i'll be honest i mean I obviously know. the the trailer ends with a member berry let's be honest but gotcha. um this is visual continuity this yes, is world continuity, continuity. Yeah. you know mm-hmm. i i always joke you know adam you'll probably remember you know whenever we're doing anything about a game or anything like that and, and it calls back to the Nostromo look, or it calls back to the Hadley's Hope look. You know, I make a joke about Space Ikea and all these sort of places um, buying the same, uh, you know, prefabricated uh, pop-up colonies from Space Ikea. And I totally see that as being a thing in the future. So, you know, all these kind of places sharing similar architecture, similar visual look to it, you know, is, is again another form of realism to me. I totally see this as being realistic and I love it and it already sets the trailer off in a good moment and it makes me feel good about the film's production design straight away. Yeah, and you've got the, a lot of nice use of smoke as well in there which reminds me of Nostromo too. Those mm. old steamy spaceships. But yeah, yeah this, this corridor is very much evocative of, of the first alien. And it's interesting, Fide Alvarez was talking about it's it's setting in a recent interview uh, between Alien and Aliens, and apparently there are two modules of this station, and one is older, more alien feeling, and the other is newer, more aliens feeling. Um, Romulus, Romulus being is... the newer yeah. one, and Remus, yes. um, I assume, is is this hallway right here. We're seeing part of that. Is that right? Is Romulus the old one? I think Romulus is the new one, and oh. Remus is the old one. I thought it was the other way around, actually. That's a bit. I, don't know. But I could the, be wrong. The, the station itself is called the Renaissance Station, and it, it's funny, you know, you're talking about the one being older looking than the other, and Fede talked about in one of the interviews that old fan theory around the differences between the Prometheus aesthetic and the Nostromo aesthetic. You know that old argument of. Yeah, but Alien's so retro looking, it's lo-fi sci-fi, and then Prometheus rolls around with holograms and fucking uh, fancy pants, everything. And and I think a lot of the you know fan theory is, yeah, but it's the fucking scientific flagship of this, you know, immensely wealthy company. Of course it's gonna look better than a piece of shit tug. And and Fede talked about that, comparing it between truckers and um, someone rolling around in a Tesla. And I was like, Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, Fede, and I like to see him reference that. I feel I feel like he's actually quite a clued up fan, and, and from what I've talked, um, you know, behind off the book stuff, you know, uh, people have found him to be very clued up on his knowledge and stuff like that, which is exciting to hear. All these interviews I've heard this last day or so after the trailer's release, I'm like, I am so on board with this man. I'm just. Everything that coming out of his mouth is, you know, is, is pleasing the nerd inside me, is pleasing the alien nerd here. And I'm very, very excited 
to hear more from him. So, um, I really like the pan to the blood as well. Although, you know, this this has been edited for some um, territories. I'm uh, wondering if these I are believe that. resurrection Italy. type smuggling, you know, pods here or something. Because they kind of look like that. I don't think they look like resurrections. I mean, they look like a different style. I mean, yeah, different visual aesthetic, but you know what I mean, like mobile pod carriers or something that's i don't know that's the impression I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't. that doesn't look like a cryosleep chamber to me but that that's again another one of the cool things of the film is the diff, uh, film the franchise is these different styles of like yeah cryo yeah, i mean it, it, it wasn't it the read fits I got. in it, it doesn't I'd, I'd have to look at the alien resurrection one i, I don't remember what they look like but here the, we go the <laughs> majority of the action in the trailer oh, is Face face hugger action. So cool. I mean, how yeah. I would never expect that, you know, uh, for the face huggers to have such prominent uh, role in the action, and it's exciting to me because when I saw this, my first thought was the comic Berserker or slash uh, Frenzy, as it was republished as. If you remember, if you remember that one, gents. It's been too long since I've read that, but it, it reminded which, me which of. Um, it well, reminds me. There's, sorry, there's a very iconic cover from that series of face, like um, somebody yeah, opening like a drawer remember. event and Cover, face yeah. storming out. Um, so I, I immediately had, had vibes of that. And I find it refreshing because outside of aliens, maybe, you know, when we have uh, Burke. Um, spilling the face huggers in in that little room, you know we have that nice scene of a bit of cat and mouse between Ripley and New and two face huggers in there. We don't really get to see the face huggers do much, um, you know. Little bits of the flashbacks, not flashbacks, uh, little bits of like the the opening sequence in Alien Three. Um, I do like that shot in the theatrical cut where you see the face hugger in the EEV, you know, when Spike's there. Um, but otherwise, That's yeah, cool. you really don't get to see him do much other than, you know, wiggle out of an egg. So, in fairness, this, they this are a cool. little bit on the single-minded side. I, so. I, I know, but as, as I a agree. narrative, be, yes, I, I've narrative often wanted to see a face hugger sort of need to do problem solving or something because we know what it would like to do but there's lots of interesting it's things got together. you can do with them still just a face hugger chase like i don't think we've really seen that in the movies before oh, honestly nice. it kind of reminded me of that opening of uh, the recent video game alien stark descent yes, where you had that yes. mob of face huggers just yeah swarm a whole station it, it needs to be said that in fairness to covenant we did get some nice face Hugger shots a bit scrabbling around and stuff. I did. Covenant. I I didn't like those moments in Covenant. I didn't think it was portrayed very well. I'll be honest. But like here, I I think especially. I mean, there's two instances of it, the trailer is them busting through glass, mm. and you know, you you think back to Alien. Kain. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So to actually see them Smashes. smash their way through glass and stuff like that, and we get a nice little look at the um. The design, the interpretation here. Um, I it's don't have a zoo. I don't super face hugger coloring. It, it does. Yes, that was immediately Black my thought. It's and yellow and, like and a, a dead wasp. little bit of red. You know that that kind of look to it as well. Um, very you, obviously, if you're watching the video, you can't see it here. I'm not zoomed <laughs> in, but there, there's good. Um, there's some good sort of screen caps of it online where you can get a, a really good look at the coloring. And it very much looks like a, a, a queen face hugger. And I really, I, can't, I hope that, I don't expect it to, I'll be honest, because we know that Ridley hates the queen. You know, it, it's been said in the past that in Ridley's mind, the queen does not exist in his... Has he stood that outright? He, he doesn't like... Well, it's, it's been relayed. Because he praised um, aliens in the illustrated screenplay. He did, but if you remember back to, it was Ian Nathan. Uh, if you remember who Ian Nathan is, he's um, he wrote Alien Vault, and he's currently directing Aliens Expanded, that fan produced, um, fan funded. Uh, sorry, should I say documentary? And he produced the 
unfortunate sparse content uh, that was behind the scenes for Covenham. And he relayed that this is what he was told when he was on set with the creature effects guys. And he's looking around for the queen going, what about the queen? And, you know, odd studios um, or odd creatures. I forget what the amalgamated name was. They said to him, no, 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 don't mention the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't exist. Um, which is, you know, it is. It's well, kind it of a relief in, in some way because it could potentially be another member berry if it's not used in a unique or different way. But I like to think there's going to be something special about these mm. face huggers. Mm. Giger liked it though. Giger enjoyed the queen, Giger. but it's Giger been a while since we've now. seen the queen on film. Um, gosh, when was the last time? I MVP. guess AVP. Yeah. yeah. So I think she's due for a return sometime. And honestly, even with isolation, like, um, I mean, you have to think there, there had to have been a queen somewhere on the station and there was there an was. idea for that. They just ended up not going with it. And so yeah, it, it, it feels like the yeah, queen... no, they, they said they didn't want to use the queen or show the queen because players Everyone would expect to have to yeah, interact yeah, yeah. with it and stuff it, like that. Feels there like is the... a queen on Sevastopol, but we don't see it. It feels like the queen has always been in a very aliens kind of vibe and context. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be cool to see her kind of in retroactively made more alien style, you know? So I still well, hope as long she as there's room, she'll just set up shop wherever she can. Uh, depends if there's a, <laughs> she's not going to be in one of these little <laughs> corridors, is she? Um, well, yeah. It's also nice to see that color of red where they're emerging from it's very um med lab esque it's yeah. the same red tone also using the flare to attract the alien there that's straight out of alien isolation yeah. and jurassic park of course <laughs> and jurassic world so here we get um get some but strange vibes off, off this character movement. don't you yeah so uh this is david johnson i believe the actor's name yeah. is Fairly sure this Ironically. is the Android character. Yeah. So, I mean, you get that off the stance. You get that off the vibe here, don't you? Yeah. And I think I think it was one of the uh, one of the interview, one of the outlets, you know, when they were interviewing Fed Egg, they were like, so he's an Android, right? And Fed Egg was like, you got that from the trailer, really? And it's like, yeah, yeah, we, we can get that from the stance. I'm very curious to see um, how they handle you know the synthetics in this, um, yeah. because we know again from the interviews, and this is something I'm really, really curious about. Actually, and I quite like the theme of it. Is there's a lot of sibling pairing going off in the film, so he is in some ways a sibling to one of the characters. Uh, m must be. Um, so I'm very curious to see how that dynamic is portrayed in, in here. You chose a particularly nasty shot to pause on here. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> the best be shot of the thing. <laughs> this, this confirmed to me, this is what I said, in Evil So for film, audio listeners, yeah. describe. Describe. Okay, this is the scene with a, uh, it's like a female character having what is... To me, obviously, a face hugger ovipositor being slid out of her mouth, being removed. Um, but it's a sort of very, it's not gratuitous, but it is, it's in graphic. Sort of almost, yeah, but it's in silhouette, which I find is an interesting choice. Um, if you look at his pre, this is one of the things I thought, oh, that's an interesting choice of director, because in Evil Dead, you have the, um, the tree scene. Um, in Don't oh, Breathe, I forgot about that. I yes, about the uh, but it, but it's a lot more, um, sort of. It's not again. It's not glorifying. It's it's very much for the horror well, it, the, moment the, in it. The the tree in the original was ridiculous. In my, I don't yeah. like the original The Evil Dead. So I'm and sorry, it, I don't. He made but he made it made it horrifying. Remake, made it, yes, yes. It made it and disgusting, it's also, and disturbing, and so wrong. Yeah. It's not played for laughs in uh, no, in the remake. Not at all. And it's. Uh, also the victim's reaction to it as well it's very much played up for that and in don't breathe that there is without spoiling it there is another scene which plays heavily on 
um, involunt the potential for involuntary impregnation. Mm -hmm. So my hope was, okay, this is a doctor who knows how to handle that kind of material. And here we get a, a glimpse of him knowing how to play on those sort of Giger-esque themes. Well, yes, thinking it, about that as well. Artwork, isn't it? Yes. It looks like, and yes. So I'd, I'd completely forgot that particular artwork. But mm. one of the members on our board posted a picture of um, one of Giger's pieces where it is this, you know, very yeah. Giger-esque tube coming out or into... Uh, a, yeah. a feminine mouth yeah yes. and i was like yep okay that is obviously a, a reference here as well and it's quite clearly if, it's hard to tell in motion but when you freeze frame this it is quite clearly a face hugger being pulled off because of there's you some can see legs the legs yes maybe a pouch yeah i i never took the over positive to probably be that wide you know, based on previous kind of... creature works, but it, it works because I imagine it probably yeah. just inflates. It would expand because it on... would need to yes. pump something down. That is probably and effectively probably... choke. Yeah, it's engorged, so to speak, and it is because it is a muscular pump. And we saw it. You could see it in the X-rays in the original Alien. You see it down Kane's throat, and it's full on. So I imagine at this point, this is. It's getting ready. Or something. What's interesting here is that you don't get what happened in Aliens when Hicks and Ripley were working together and it was sort of straining all over. It looks weirdly relaxed. So I'm wondering if they've somehow paralysed the face hugger while they're doing it. That could be an oh, interesting oh, way. Of, yeah, although I'd, you have to wonder, you know, the medical reports, they, they killed them taking it off. Their face is unmarked, so... This implies they're going to do something interesting with this extraction. So that in itself, it's not spoiling details, but clearly, unless they've ignored that, and I don't think he's the kind of guy to ignore something as well known as that, they kill you taking it off. This implies something interesting is going to happen with facehugger extraction. Of course, you don't know if it's already it's done its job either. So I mean, it could also just be as simple as it died relaxed on the face instead of... Instead of screwing, yeah, it off, I mean it's yeah, what, whatever it is, it's an interesting shot, and I think the purpose of it is to remind us, hey, we're not going to hold back in this film. Yeah, we're going to show stuff which makes the alien alien, and mm. that's so refreshing to me. Not because I'm looking forward to going, yeah, let's do some hentai, but <laughs> it's making me no, it's making me think this is not a director who knows he knows image composition. There is a there are a ton of shots throughout this entire trailer which have great image composition and he knows how to how to handle those themes to make them disturbing. So mm -hmm. this is that little hint of we're gonna do some things you won't like to sleep afterwards kind of thing and i'm looking forward to that. well both evil dead and um don't breathe were very up close visceral brutal you know so it, it makes sense that 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 kind of style would be at play here mm -hmm. agreed and it's it's one of the things that i've always found appealing about Feddy being attached to this film you know i do think don't breathe and the evil dead are very intense and that's the thing i like the most very intense um, films, and I'd very much like to have nightmares about Alien again. So I'm I'm curious to see uh, how he pulls that off. You want to have reasons to sleep on your front again, bring oh, those yes. childhood memories back. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. And uh, Rob says in the chat, one of our patrons watching this live, um, the perspective looks odd. Could it be a giant face hugger? I mean, it doesn't. If you're talking about super face saga, that was exoskeletal. These don't look exoskeletal. But then again, it they, only, they only really share the color form. palette. Yeah, this much because it's never been in the even in the um, the assembly cut, which isn't. But really then again, the legs be. do look quite long. Yeah, the, even so. in the assembly cut, you, it's kind of seen far away. It could be, mis and you see the X-ray shot on Ripley's face. It's a normal face saga, and then. We have not had a definitive canon queen face hugger, so maybe this could be a way of showing us a queen face hugger. Mm. But it could be something else. I I have often said maybe what the Nostromo crew found in the derelict was like that was 
the phase one compartment and there might be other wild streams of the well, alien. This could be to, to, to Adam's chagrin and to uh, deviate quite wildly already and, and, and go off topic. I, I do know um, what you're about to say here, but... Well, do you, actually? Um, so, John Spates, you know, the pre-Prometheus scripts, um, when it was a more overtly alien film and it said alien in the fucking title, you know, one of the things in the Alien Engineers draft, I think it was, um, had so many compartments in the cargo hold. I can't remember how I many he said. It was like eight or something like that. And this particular hold contained this particular variation of the alien, which is, of course, the traditional alien that we had in um, in, in Alien. Adam, you chuckled. Was that what you were thinking? I didn't I didn't know what you were about to say. I thought you were saying, well, we do know these face hookers are a little different because of some things that have come out with, with the barbs and stuff. But not, as far as the uh, this shot here, we've lingered on for too long. Uh, it's... Uh, I think he's just a thick boy, man. I think that's all. <laughs> Is it disturbing you, Adam? Do you not like being on this one? I thought oh, you liked you, Joe. Yeah, he's the he's the requiem fan. You, you are. You like uh, yeah. gratuity. Uh, yeah, fair point. Fair well, point. Come on then. No, um, I, I I like that part in requiem. It suit. It was in theme to Alien. It just didn't stick with canon. But yeah, that's it's interesting as a shot. It's so like we they put it in here. We zero get a, G action going on. A couple of seconds of somebody floating <laughs> in zero G. I fucking hope there is a nice good action sequence in zero G because as Eric mentioned when we started earlier, you know, that's something um AVP. That was in Peter Briggs's second draft of AVP, this elusive second draft that is still not any um in, in my hands, and I want it to be in my hands, but yeah, they it opens with zero g combat between the alien and the predators so to actually see not necessarily that but potentially see something in this film around zero g and the aliens sign me it, the fuck up it doesn't even have to be an adult alien it could be you know a face hugger or something sort of pushing it off by its tail and mm. there's this weird thing because you're you're then at the same speed one of those is they've got to rely on the same pushing themselves off. And that's actually something I put in my RPG scenario. I put a potential for zero group G and I thought, right, how do I do this with the mechanics? So to see a possibility of it having here fills me with a lot of how are they going to handle this? And with that said, it's probably not going to feature any aliens whatsoever. It's going to be something that's <laughs> just five seconds. But yeah, I'm like, for my mind initially, like first thing I saw that I thought, this finally it might be like in the peter briggs script i think in that one it was referred to as um you see what happens with the blood in zero gravity because it's a That's... fluid fluid doesn't act like fluid does here it goes into like spheres if you ever look at astronaut videos where they're drinking and stuff they sort of pour it out in the air it goes into a sphere and it's that could be very very crazy i really want to see some zero g acid blood mayhem mm. and to be fair i would want it to be adults i'll be honest i love any opportunity to see the grace of the alien you know, one of my favorite moments of recent history is the introduction of, well, no, it's not the introduction, the second introduction of Stompy in isolation. When you see him come oh, out of the vent in, in the San Cristobal and just the way it unfills, it's mesmerizing is the word I describe it as. And I feel like you could really get some sort of, stuff like that in a zero g situation yeah. and and you I mean this, the this is sliver. this is obviously my fan wank fantasies of of the situation but i've just the potential for zero g shenanigans is um quite exciting to me yeah and they replicated that for the um dead by daylight thing of course indeed and we've got a few little bits of shots of what looks like um a character in i guess cockpit maybe it looks like a window through there maybe it's the cockpit of the shuttle because the next scene then goes to the shuttle yeah. sort of exploding off the station but Did again you more so notice the nostromo warning symbols at the yes. top they're straight so out the nostromo we, we've got a ron Cobb semiotic straight away and you know that's 
something else isolation did quite liberally and quite well was um signage within Sevastopol. And I love seeing it here. Um it's like the per- Perina kind of looking um semiotics there. And what looks a little bit like maybe a coffee station kind of thing, but you know, not much too much to say on this one at the minute. But um I'm liking a lot. We've seen a lot of orange in the trailer. I'm actually quite liking this palette. Yeah, the ship is just being rocked here from from an explosion. It almost looks like a potentially yeah, the same fuel yellow. jet. Um, mm. Looks like an explosion. That does. But... And more face over action as well. But yeah, I really wish we hadn't have seen who got jump jumped on. Yeah, they could have cut it here. But I mean, it's interesting where you know you got that inertia of the sump person literally being pushed back with the yeah. force of it. It's, um... And and it is nice again to um, see the face of us actually seem threatening and fearsome. Um, and, and the speed and the movement and stuff like that here. Well, yeah, there's a, there are a lot of fans who said it wasn't the a, the adult aliens that scared them. They've always had nightmares about the facehuggers because it, it's that primal it's sort of tarantula. Yeah, yeah, it's a tarantula with a reptilian tail. It's that is a scary thing to face, and if it's trying to impregnate you, that's mm-hmm. yeah. I'm glad we're getting it. for a long time. I mean, at the minute, as as a thirty. Some I don't even know how old I am. As a 30-something-year-old bloke, you know, the only scene I look away from when I'm watching Alien, the Alien films now, is Newt's autopsy. Can't stand it. But, like, 10 years ago, a little bit more, I still used to have to look away when the facehugger jumped out at Kane. You know, that, that scene used to still make me jump out of my skin. It's and that, that screech. It doesn't now, but, you know, that fear of the face, you know, we were saying earlier about my nightmare, sleeping face down, so the chest burst, it couldn't come out. It's fear of the life cycle, and that little fucking bastard, that, that, those face huggers, you know, they're the things that start it off, and, and there's, there's primal fear in that. And I, re- I, I love the prominence of them in this trailer, because just on that alone, you know, again, Shows freshness to me. And Sarah is also watching in the chat. She points out that in that previous uh, scene, there is a character stood by the door, seemingly <laughs> doing nothing. Although, to be fair, the face huggers are moving fast in that. Maybe like one just... just got through or something. Well, no, because there's someone else on the ground over there. By yeah, the they're, they're moving. There's also a, a smear on the window. So it's, uh, Somebody, something. Somebody's been injured. Coming up this, here, we have the uh, nostalgia bait shot. This is the yeah. <laughs> I would call this the only member berry shot in the trailer, and and her short sleeves remind me a little bit of, and her hair remind me a little bit of Ripley Apes thing, just in silhouette there, but with a basketball like thing at the top. I I don't know how I feel about this scene. You. <sighs> It's even got the LED, the red LED ammo mm. readout on the side. Well, well, just just to talk about scene composition and um, mm. it obviously being a very clear reference to Ripley coming out of the elevator in in Aliens. Homages are a difficult thing, I think. I, you know, we we were talking earlier about this being um, a lot of this being visual continuity, you know. I don't consider that homage. That's world building. This, I struggle with it a little bit. You know, it's it's the very obvious references that pull me out of films that I tend to disagree with in homages. So it's normally dialogue for me. Nothing pisses me off more than hearing get to the chopper or, you know, some some variation of that. If it's in, you know, if it's in some foreign language like I think Nikolai does in Predators, I, I, I think that's cute. It doesn't pull me out. I learn about it later. That's fine. I don't think we've really seen many visual homages. Not one dipping bird. Well, no, I mean, in the, in, the other, in, the movie. <laughs> in, in the other films, I wouldn't really count the dipping birds, I'll be honest, because uh, that's background. But like, can you think of any of the other 
any other moments in Requiem the uh, the best hits compilation sort of like um, film where it directly referenced uh, a, 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 you know a move like this. I can't. I can't think. I of mean, res- there was one shot predators. in AVPR where it's directly taken from uh, the face hook is in uh, jumping. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. T T two three D. The universal attraction. I know it's a deep cut. That but does not count. They were a fan of James Cameron, uh, but no, it doesn't count because it's too deep a cut. Many people won't know that. But with this, yes, it's very, very evocative of Ripley exiting the elevator. But I, honestly, I don't mind it. I mean, we'll have to see the context in the film. The proto pulse rifle is is kind of interesting. There it has a white look. Again, kind of reminds me of some of the weaponry in Alien Isolation, like the white shotgun, uh, and of course, just your your white alien flamethrower you have as well. Um, so yeah, and I, uh, I don't know. It looks cool and spooky, and we'll have to see if it feels too. We'll have to see how the sequence plays out. If it feels too much like Ripley creeping towards the hive, you know. Um, if it's just this little moment that's kind of evocative, then I personally don't have an issue with it. You see, I saw one interview where the director did did acknowledge this is a. You know, it's based on that. So he he knew he was conscious of that when he filmed it. Um, but to me, this is just you know she's stepping through smoke. She's holding a gun and she's saying, "Where are she?" She is worried and concerned, and most of all, most importantly of all, she is on her own. Um, I I'm, I don't think the thing about homage this is if it's distracting, it pulls you out of it. Yeah, this it's not distracting. It's just got similarities. I, I think this is just going to be. You know, someone who's armed, kind of stalking through, and I don't get the sense she's hunting. I think she's worried about something closing in on her, maybe. So, can't really judge it. No, I, mean, I think that's it, I think it looks cool. It, it there's a lot, the hell of a lot of smoke. So all that steam does remind me of the Auriga in Alien Resurrection. That was just one big smoky shit. Um, well, Robin, yeah, Robin, Sarah. Well, no, sorry. Rob agrees with you in the chat. You know, he got Ripley 8 vibes. Uh, Sarah's saying Alien 3 vibes uh, with the Ripley short sleeves, but not the hair. And there is someone Adam... bald in this, would not there? I think it looks... Yes, Eileen I- Wu's character. Yeah. Um, so, another one. I like this pulse rifle, this uh, this uh, predecessor pulse rifle. Let's, let's be honest. Covenant's attempts... Uh, Future and up an AUG were piss poor, <laughs> and uh, Prometheus's plasma weaponry was boring as flip. And I actually like to see the effort. How, that's... how boring? When you say boring, what do you mean? Just as they in they were, they were good. visually they're visually boring. Okay, they just I... look like regular standard weapons. There's no real focus on them, so you can't get a sense for their design in Prometheus and Covenant. Um, yeah, it definitely seems more intriguing here another thing to note on the uh, elevator there i don't see an elevator cab and the gate is well, open so it potentially looks like stairs at uh, ladders sorry not stairs um ladders there so emergency ladders in yeah. a, a lift shaft but sorry stop distracting me i want to talk about the pulse rifle um <laughs> i i really like that it looks like a pulse rifle. It looks like an early version of the pulse rifle. You know, it looks early in that it looks awkward to handle, as in it's like, like a prototype kind of build of it. Um, but it's quite clearly got a lot of that visual language. Again, visual continuity. There's it's design aesthetic got, in there um, with like the carry ca- handle. Well, yeah, yeah, I was thinking ca- it's got electric cables running down the side. And I know in one interview, the director did talk about this and he said it's an early version of pulse technology now yeah. we never had from james cameron the clarification of what the hell pulse actually mean meant it's, for pulse rifle it's supposed there are to a number be. of different things over the years so i'm so guessing I, it's based on that i think the tech manual was the one that elaborated on it you know the colonial marines mm. technical manual and, it, and pulse was the method in which the we should have got. A, we, sh- we should have got. A, we should have got a gun nut American on here, not just a, a liberal Adam. Um, what are you talking about? I'm a gun owner. I go to the range. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, the the way in which like the cartridge is, is ignited and 
the the gunpowder is ignited and propelled out pulse is the way that that um I mean, it might that be. process is initiated. I can't really think of the right words. Yeah, yet. it's it's the way that the the gunpowder, whatever's inside it, is the reaction, well, the, the catalyst is, is initiated and pushes it out. You know, whatever it is, the cables are going to be what makes the sound effect. <laughs> Just going to get that. I can because it's one thing having the pulse rifle, but what people are really going to respond to is the sound, the classic sound. Because you imagine if she fires the pulse rifle. And it will sound just like an M4 or something. You want it to have that chunky oh, yeah. sound. Yeah. So as long as they've got that layer, that's what I, I would like to think he's going to have futured it up in the mm-hmm. sound design department or, or mixed it up a little bit more, which is nice. Rob says it's the Nerf edition. I'm taking that as a bit of a slag off. Robbie, <laughs> you're not liking it. Didn't uh, Fide mention in one of his interviews that the eventual Pulse Rifle, he said, oh, is created by some general? And I'm like, is he referencing... That anthology book, the short, the short story. This, so he knows. Like, is he actually referencing that? Is that what it's about? Buck Potentially, up, right? I, I don't remember. Or, or it could be the tech manual as well. I never made it all the way through. It's dry. It's so dry. <laughs> I can't finish yeah. that, uh, that book. But yeah, in um, I'm the only one. One of the did. short stories in in Bug Hunt. You know, it, it is presented as if it's like a discovery channel kind of historical look at the development of the pulse rifle and i don't think it's necessarily a general but it's supposed to be like um developed or or, um perfected by infantrymen who know how shit the earlier versions were and and perfected it to be this iconic mainstay of the cloning marines um armament i haven't seen that interview adam so if he is referencing that that's actually quite Again, endearing. It's what you posted. Cute. Was it in? Was it in, in that roundup. caption? So you know, so long as it's Let's not the Wayland Storm rifle that can take out a satellite from the ground, <laughs> or whatever it was, they released that for Prometheus. It's not in. Um, it's not in the caption I shared. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll find I it. Don't, later. I don't know where you found that, but yeah, be very um, curious to see that. And Sarah says, um, "Love me some visual homages." It, it feels like I'm back in a familiar place, but I don't know what's coming. Makes the earlier films feel new again. Yeah. So uh, different perspectives. It's not there. too blatant a copy and paste thing. It's just. Uh, Rob says no, he's not having a dig. It looks decent. So we've made it nearly all the way through this trailer without a glimpse of the alien itself. And then it ends with a very quick inner jaw action. And I'm I'm glad we got that minuscule one, two second little um little look at, at the film's alien. Um, you know the fact the certain fans would be up in arms going, Oh, they haven't got an adult alien in yeah. this if they hadn't done that. But you get some jaw on skull action. So or... that was the same thing with the Covenant teaser as well. We only saw that alien at the very end of the teaser in the uh the shower scene. And well no, didn't Oh, in the teaser. Yeah, okay. It was the full trailer where we got what would eventually become another one of those money shot of him um, on the the, on the lander. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, I remember now. Um, and it was really... it was in your compilation. I sent it to you. <laughs> no, but I did I post a quote of it. Yeah. Where's this? I I sent it to you on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> It's not in the bit where it's talking about the pulse rifle. Yeah, I'd just say um, a lot of fans have been saying it's really refreshing. Now, I don't know. It could just be the lighting. But people have been commenting about it does look also on the, unfortunately, uh, the design poster, like the alien has been given back its metal teeth again. Yes, yes, you see it in the Jeez. poster. And yeah, okay, Adam, I do see it. Yes, it says by this general. Apparently, it's my skim reading. <laughs> But yeah, the um, the alien in Covenant had clear teeth, didn't it? Yes. Okay, so that's good to see it return to that. What did they have in Aliens? In Aliens, I kind of remember. They were transparent. M- the Queen I think had they were metallic. transparent teeth. The Queen had them. transparent, but I, I think they still kept the metallic mm. stuff all the way through Resurrection, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. 
as far as so, I don't know. We'll do a segment on alien teeth another time. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't, you know, we don't really get a good shot of the alien, but it's it's nice that it's in there. Um, the glimpse I'm in it looks about good. That. But I we don't do want to see the big alien yet until the well. The I mean, we film. we get a good look at it, or at least the lower part of the jaw in the yeah. in the tra- in trailer. Fucking idiot. Um, in the teaser poster. Yes. What What do you think about the teaser poster? Lazily designed, like the Covenant oh, one. Really? <laughs> I. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, yes, I get the comparison to the Covenant poster. I've also seen a comparison to one of the Shin Godzilla posters that's just kind of the lower part of Godzilla's jaw with this mostly just red poster. So I like it. I honestly like it more than the the Covenant teaser poster. But yeah, it's it's a bit evocative for sure. I think there's a bit bit too much negative space at the bottom, I'll be honest, but I do like the intent and the design of you know just seeing this tiny part of the alien with this also very iconic feature of the alien which is that draw you know that viscous mucus coming down and we get a nice lot of uh, detailing around the lower part of the jaw as we've well got the mouth tendons the jaw and tendons, we've got the nice. yeah, yeah um transparent and thicker looking ones um than i remember some of the later incarnations being unfortunately we probably will get spoiled with action figure previews they're gonna be out there at some point so we will see the alien design at some point but i i I want the poster out i want it up you know above me on the walls i have to this day still got i still think it's perhaps one of the better posters even if it's not representative of the film but you know like that fallen angel poster from covenant where you've got like all the Adam you muted, um, where you've got all the engineers um, being crawled upon by aliens. And oh, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was just agreeing with you. That's one of my favorite alien posters of all time. I have that one framed. So agree. Mm. So I'd like to get that one up up on the walls. It'd have to replace my AVPR Japanese poster, but I think it's um, I think it's worth it. Is that the one with um, the yellow writing on? Yes. Got, for for two like two that, for yeah. the AVP two yeah it looks um, very very eastern yeah in design yeah uh, uh, Rob Harvey agrees uh, agrees with you uh, is very reminiscent of the Covenant trailer uh, not trailer uh, poster and I I agree and I, I see I see the similarities in terms of it just being an alien shrouded in in darkness and it being a very uh, minimalistic look at the creature. I I like minimalism when it's symbolic minimalism or they disguise body parts to look like something else and then you look at it from a distance and you go, oh yeah, that means... But it's just just the the lower jaws and drool. And to me... It's a bit boring for you. Yeah, but you could have been more creative. Like, it's it's a generic poster, but it's because it's compared with a a trailer which is this good so in a way it's a compliment to the trailer it doesn't match what the trailer does if it had been a match for how creative and symbolic the trailer was yeah but it's it's much more generic than the trailer itself was but the trailer i'm really happy with the only people i've seen complaining about the other people that say oh you know it's gonna he's gonna drop the ball now there are people making predictions in lieu without knowing anything about the story I like what the trailer did, and I'm looking forward to it because of it. Mm. it's nice to have some an alien exclusive project where most of fandom is going, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. maybe it's not dead, which we've always been saying on this. Ridley Scott, the beast is not cooked. Maybe this is showing you, well, Mr. Scott. <laughs> I mean, not Covenant. Isolation proved that long ago. Yeah, um, but he didn't. You know. He didn't know anything about that. It was a video game. I don't get the sense he ever. I know, but I mean that. I mean, I mean that more in terms of a, you know, I, I still respect Ridley, but yes, yes. he talks some bullshit these yeah. days, and that is one of the you know pieces yeah. of bullshit. But Fede is obviously the the isolation influence in this, you know, in, in Romulus team, in yeah. the teaser is in there, and, and we know that. And something we haven't talked about which we need to bring up is some of the comments that Fede said about the creature effects 
on Romulus. And he's basically said he went and got... I mean, we know this to some degree anyway, don't we? Um, the talent that was involved. Um, you know, we've got Weta, we've got uh, Legacy, we've got Studio whatever Gillis. Alec Gillis... Yeah, Studio Gillis. I forgot what the company became then. And they the, got the guy who did sculpted the Alien Queen's head involved in this, which I found was... Well, they wow. he works for... Isn't that Shane... My, my, Mahan, something like that. He works for Legacy. Also, apparently the uh, ship at the beginning is a miniature uh, because um, uh, Mike from our boards uh, sent me uh, on Instagram pro Mac Machina, I guess. Uh, they, they posted the trailer, and so I assume they're doing the ship uh, miniatures. Maybe so that's an assumption, as well. though. Yeah, it's an assumption, but uh, we know they're involved somehow, and they do miniatures, so... Okay. Well, don't so, forget, Covenant had physical things on set, but they used them to gauge lighting to replace with CGI, so yeah. it could be well, that as well. Do well, let's, let's let's just talk a little bit about the... Let's read his comments out. So, uh, this this is Fede talking to... I think it was Games Radar, but he said variations of this in pretty much all the interviews. Um, so, just like anybody else, I've been appalled by bad CG in movies that have ruined my... Sorry, Adam just sent me that and distracted me there. Um, they've ruined my experiences of it, but I'm not against it. I think you have to do whatever's best for the shot and what, uh, whatever technique does it better you should do. We went crazy to crazy extents in this movie to do things practically. We had Weta Workshop doing a lot of the face huggers. And not only that, we brought back the guys that worked on Aliens Shane Mahan, yeah, so it so was Shane, who sculpted the Queen's head himself, was the one in charge of building all the xenomorphs for our movie. So Shane is, is at um, Legacy. Multiple aliens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there, there's confirmation straight there that, well, I mean, that could... It could be different iterations of yeah. one suit yeah. or something, or, but or it, diff it sounds like all the aliens. Yeah. Unless he's also doing the face huggers, maybe? Possible. No, I don't think so within with yeah. them specifically well, calling it wet there. Or, yeah. Um, and when I say build, we built them. We did full animatronics for all the creatures in the movie. It was one of the best experiences in my career just to see these guys that I admire so much back working together. There were moments when we'd need nine puppeteers to make a creature work, and you had all of these guys now in their 60s under the table, and I'm there with them because there's not enough hands. I got to be under the table puppeteering these things with the guys that worked on the original Aliens. Uh, so that's been the best part. It's not the original Fed, eh? Come on, this is the second iteration. And then uh, CG just comes when you really go, oh, if we do something here, we could do something really cool that the puppets never could. And you go there. But we really tried and we really succeeded. So, I mean, I do think the face hugger shots in the trailers are obviously CG. They have and to I, be because of what yeah. they're doing in it. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually quite like what I saw of the face was in here. I mean, basically, these comments, if you, you go back to, what, 2004, I think it was, they mirror exactly what Paul Anderson was saying. Except oh, that's that throwing he, this in a bad light. <laughs> no, no, no. He, it's the same approach, but this has a much bigger budget and it has much more professional people involved in the effects um, you know, it was just it was hampered by the limitations, but it's the same stuff. He was talking about you augment the practical where you need to, and you have to find that perfect balance. Um, so it, it is the same methodology, but I think here there's more of a chance of it going right because that even in AVP, that there, there, there are definitely shots where you go, yeah, that looks fake, and I'm I don't think here we're going to get something where you go that looks fake. I think the CG in AVP didn't hold up terribly great, let's be honest. No. But neither um, did the, the some of the practical suit work either, unfortunately. Like the alien where it just scrabbles on the floor like a beetle upturned. It's yeah, just a little bit. Weird. That's performance and direction yeah. as well, though. But yeah, um, Rob Harvey says, I wonder if this means there's no one inside the suits. That's a good question. Is well, it like all sirens? animatronics? <laughs> I mean, it could. But we got an animatronic queen. It's fully animatronic queen in, in AVP. AVP. Yeah. And the entire animatronic thing was a yes. yeah. and, and one of the adults was animatronic, yeah. 
And they built an animatronic That's right. Predalien yeah. baby car. They didn't get um, used, if I remember rightly. We also know, thanks to the um, credits of the teaser, we know who's going to be doing the music of this film. And that is Benjamin Wallfish. And uh, I believe he co-composed the Blade Runner 2049 score with Hans Zimmer. He's also done other horror films, such as uh, the recent It films, Invisible Man, and Annabelle Creations. So um, I really enjoyed the the score for Covenant by... Um, Jed Kurzel. Uh, Jed Kurzel, that's right. Uh, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what, what Benjamin does with this one. We've yeah, never I'm had not... a returning composer for an alien film, have we? I don't think so. I don't think no. ever. Yeah. No. Um, there was some comments that Fede made about the score. Let me just bring it up. Um, uh, we can't. So this was a interview with a Spanish outlet, and so this is translated. So we get the awesome. Um, European title here. Uh, we can't talk about Alien, the eighth passenger, without thinking about Jerry Goldsmith's score. Who composed the soundtrack for Alien? Romulus. So this is Fede replying now. Uh, the composer is Benjamin Wolfish, who worked with many of my colleagues and whom I greatly admire. He is responsible for the music of Blade Runner 2049. He worked with Lee Wannell on the incredible soundtrack of The Invisible Man. And he worked with my friend Andy Machetti on both it. On both it's. Um, he's someone very talented, but I also think he's one of the most alien loving people I've ever met. And as I do, and I enjoy constantly quoting other films, he does the same with the music. He has a very specific sound. But there are also musical references here and there from many of the original songs, but that obviously means tracks. I... I'm a little wary, I'll be honest of that. I think Jed Kurzel managed to weave in Goldsmith's sort of original motifs reasonably well without making it feel overpowered because uh, Kurzel had a very unique identity with the Neomorph uh, related tracks, you know, like the birth scene and the um, the the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, um, Lost, Lost World <laughs> scene, um, you know, the, so... Covenant has its own identity while still maintaining these these callbacks to Goldsmith. Covenant's soundtrack is actually my second favourite, I'll be honest. Alien 3 and Covenant. Um, so, I again, I'm just always a little weary about those callbacks and those homages. I hope it's done in a way that makes it feel just a part of the world without being overly reliant on them. And him, Fede, you know, saying about... Uh, Wolfish having a very specific sound I found encouraging as to him being able to pull off that same sort of um, balance that Kurzel did for Covenant Yeah um, you know it'll be it'll be interesting to hear what he does hopefully we get some uh, physical releases of the soundtrack um, I'm sure we will so we have ne- got Praise never came out on disc, did it? Uh, it well, no, you got, the, you got the vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, I got, the, yeah. I got the vinyl. I don't know. Did it have a physical disc release? Let's no, see. I, I was I was happened. needing it, and it never happens. <laughs> I got I got no, I got the I download vinyl only. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, with the practical effects to, to digital, I think we saw a pretty good balance in Prey. Um, I know some people were thinking they they could have toned down the CG on Feral Predator's face a little bit more um because we saw a lot of those comparisons between practical um face animatronic um next to the cg and a lot of people were saying the practical looked better so we'll we'll see um obviously the 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 thing prequel is always the worst example of of overdoing the cg replacing the practical but as long as there's a good balance here um it, it's interesting that we have so many different effects studios working on this between you know, three FX studios for the creatures, um, as well as the miniatures, and I guess we'll see who's doing the the CG effects as well. But it's uh, it's interesting to see all those collaborative efforts. Um, you mentioned Prey. Um, I think it is worth pointing out here. There was I forget where, but I did see one interview where it was confirmed that they were originally planning to release this just on streaming, just like Prey, and they said during production 
the studio well, said, no, we'll release it, was it theatrically. It was before they started filming, yeah. Hmm. Um, they don't, Fede doesn't specifically call out Prey as being the reason behind that, but I think we no, all know, just I think we all know it was. Yeah, um, because Probably, obviously yeah. the the huge response that Prey had uh, after after release. I mean, if if it hadn't been, yeah, might we might still be facing similar voices as were then with oh they they don't have faith in it. But Prey showed it was a good film, so this could have had the same fate. But we will see this on the big screen, which will be very. Um, I can't sure we all saw when we saw Prey. Even the people who weren't too keen on it, I think they agreed it, that some of the shots were worthy of being on the big screen. And we can see there are some great shots in the trailer alone for this. Yeah. I think they're going to be really have power on the big screen when we see it. Um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, you know, fortunately, I did get to see Prey on the big screen because uh, I was at the gala show and over here. And Adam was obviously the um, the Comic Con. Is it Comic Con? Yeah. NYCC. Yeah. I saw yeah. it again last summer with a double feature with um <clears throat> with the original Predator. So I, I was able to see it twice, which is cool. But yeah, this one we can see in theaters as many times as we want. So that'll be nice. I, I tend to do them I think it's three times, is, is is what I've done all of them. So I just hope I hope this one's great. I really do. I hope it pays um pays off. And also Eric talked about cinemas. If you've got a cine world near you. Um, Cine World's showing Predator on the 4th of April, 3rd or 4th of April um, in all, pretty much all the Cine World chains and that's also for all our UK listeners as well um, check it out on the uh, on the Cine World website and I just wanted to call out something interesting another comment from Fede's uh, interviews so he was asked about the youth of the characters say that like 20s is massively youthful it's <laughs> right for us it is now <laughs> um so talk, talking about um Cal- cali kaylee spaney kaylee kaylee um kaylee's age you know who plays uh rain carrigan i think it was carradine something like that we did get her proper name in the yeah, um... carradine or something like that yeah it, I posted it in the her, board somewhere. Yeah, they call the characters call her Rain, but apparently her full name is meant to be Rain with an E S yeah. at the end. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, not, I'm not sure. I see the point of that. Yeah, one, but... not not. Somebody said on the forums. Oh, is it released related to the Alien Three <laughs> character spelled differently? <laughs> yeah, it could have been interesting, but it would have been super. That, that, so that's it's too much fan like that. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, but um, it's, so... it's Rains, but you they pronounce it Rain in the. Things. Yeah. So talking about what Fede said, you know, he acknowledges yes, she's a younger character. All the characters are very young. I still sort of roll my out. Twenties is not very young. Um although it is to us. Well, how old um, was um cut like Lambert and Ripley struck? They they, like, they were early twenties, yeah. Like yeah, early to mid twenties. Um maybe Kane. Oh, that, like Dallas was Kane Kane and older, Dallas but... and Parker and Brett, obviously, but yeah, but yeah, it's nothing new. No, <laughs> I'm pretty so, sure a lot um, of Marines were. They wouldn't have been like late thirties or something. No, they no, been... they'd have been like late twenties. Um, yeah, 30s. so nothing it's, new. It's, really, it's not terribly far off. But no. the, the the thing I'm getting at here is is the other bits of the quote. So them being younger, that was inspired by the beginning of the extended cut of Aliens. There's a shot that really inspired the whole story where you can see all the kids running around the corridor on Hadley's Hope. I always thought, wow, what would it be like for those kids to grow up in a terraforming colony that still needs another 50 years to be habitable? You're probably going to take the same job as your parents. What's the hope? I thought, wouldn't it be great to catch up with these characters? Not exactly these characters, but that type of young kid growing up in a Wayland yutani shake and bake colony. I love him using the language there. And see how their life would be when they reach their early 20s. What do they want out of life? Do they want to stay there and what and do what their parents did? Work the mines, work the farms, and that's it. Or do they want more out of life? That's what kick-started the whole journey of this character, Rain. I assume he's talking about there. It was something I was always fascinated with. Maybe it's because I'm from Uruguay and the idea of growing up in a place 
where you know how far you can get and the things that can happen there and the things that will never happen there. So at the time, I always connected with those characters. I love this. I absolutely fucking love this. Um, because I, that must be a universal identifiable thing. Obviously, Fede's got a very specific example there. But, you know, how the fuck I ended up in the position I'm in, I have no fucking idea. I didn't go into life wanting to do the job I do. <laughs> I purposefully avoided my career when I was trying to decide what to do in college. But here I am. So this this idea of satisfaction of your future, satisfaction of what you're doing, I love it. You know, that's the kind of thing I really enjoy of characters in the expanded universe, self-identity, um, self-satisfaction. That is pure, real life, realism, identifiable characters in the way that the blue collar kind of thing is. You know, how many of these blue collar characters are satisfied with their lot in life? And here we have characters that are struggling with that and, and seemingly making a choice to do something about it. Yeah, it's it's very much that pioneer spirit because you, you, you do, I mean, it was originally a deleted scene in the special edition see this and it is very much like a, a, it's a futuristic version of how those kind of wild west towns would have been back in the day but it is interesting that this director i think he wrote co-wrote or wrote the whole script as well but he does it's, have yeah, a co-writer with a regular yeah, he, partner he, he he has personal experience in his background he came from one of those kind of places of what he's saying in the modern day so he can very much he I mean he says he latched onto it he 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 went from that perspective of well what would that kind of person think like it's not just a character who has that as a plot point it's how would they actually feel about where would that mentality take them and of course how would that affect them in a high stress situation like they're going to face too um, that was that was something you mentioned as well it's interesting that he's got the relatability to it. Mm. He did men. This was something I was a little worried about. Um, but you know, he mentioned the youth affecting the decisions they make, and I'm hoping that doesn't mean we get stupid horror cliche. Um, yeah, we've had enough of sort of, prequels. sort yeah. of decision making. Um, if it's but... rash, like if you're if you're under the gun, if you're saying that it's coming through the door, it's coming through the door. What I liked about Covenant, my favorite thing was that backburster thing where. Mm -hmm. The stress is building. It's built, and all the protocols they're falling down. And I love that. It was the best scene in the entire film for me. And yeah. it felt like that is something a person, even though they got training, they can screw up. It's like mm -hmm. that scene in um, Species where they're trying to grow the thing, and then somebody screws up. The screw falls down on the floor, and they're trying to get out from the great the grating. And all the while, it's growing in the tank, and it's building. It's building up. Something like that totally relatable it, it 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 heightens the stakes it makes the tension great if he's going to do that great but if it's just going to be yeah there's the space cobra oh come on we're all gonna roll our eyes we're gonna groan and we're gonna say i thought we we got past this um yeah it could go to extremes if it's the relatable aliens kind of way mm -hmm. do that that but could yeah. add to it not detract but I also like, again, it's showing awareness of the wider franchise um, to specifically call out the, the the character journey of people in those situations. I love it. I love it. It's going back to the Nostromo crew where a lot of people relate to them because, like, yeah, they're truckers or they're, they're just doing the job. and Mundane jobs Park, in them. Parker is, and Brett a bit like, they have, like, how, how long will it take? Oh, it take this long and, and they give another answer upstairs and you go, yeah, they're, they're bullshitting just to give them some extra time. And it's all related to what, and even the Marines, mm -hmm. you have the poster saying this time it's war. And it could have been so easy to do that macho bullshit thing. But, you know, they're in the mess hall. They're bitching about when are we going to get to see combat? Oh, we're just going to, it's going to be dumbass colonists. We're always facing technical glitches. They want to use their training and they never get to do it. And it makes them just like, yeah, that's a situation I could believe I do or my grandkids do because 
it's it's a relatable thing through history. You go back into the ancient world and you look at personal correspondence from like ancient Rome and ancient Egypt. People were bitching about the same stuff they do now. It's just yeah, they're not talking about the internet or but even like celebrities and oh they're they're talking about they talk about that then too. It's through history, all this stuff. If you can make a character who has contemporary concerns that mean ways that go, yeah, you know what? Yeah, bang on. I I'm with that. It's what makes that deleted scene in Aliens where like Simpson and Lidecker, you we don't ask because it takes so long to get an yep. answer. And the question is always don't ask. And mm-hmm. it's you could tell James Cameron, he was a trucker. He put that stuff in there because he's probably had that kind of dialogue in real life. And you have someone watch it today and they're gonna be like, Yeah, my boss, they said that last week or something. <laughs> if we can get that, yes. We want that. We don't want the elite scientists. We want people that like, mm-hmm. yeah, they were just on their way and they got... It's always in the RPG scenarios we face, right? It's always like, we're on our way home. Oh, damn it. It's got The shuttle's been <laughs> delayed and then things happen and then you always get attacked by a face hugger. But, um, I, yeah, that's another yeah. reason I was kind of uh, excited to see the face huggers in this. I was like, it's, li- it's like living out an <laughs> RPG scenario and I'm one of those... Uh, <laughs> characters on there you know i'm playing eileen Wu's character in, um, yeah. in an rpg scenario <laughs> yeah only thing it, it didn't whip someone with a tail but aside from that <laughs> that's funny no i i agree with you i do really hope it plays out in that sort of realism angle and i and, feel like it's gonna you know yeah and also relatable. that is what made them classics that you can mm-hmm. re-watch over yep. and over again without that it becomes a straight a to b yeah, chase it's, sequence. It's a very it's real world. The relatability that's what makes you care for the characters. Yeah. It's not about you know when people say oh it was written with heart. It's not written with heart, but it's written with relatability, and the people are reacting to things in believable ways. There weren't characters necessarily reacting to things in believable ways in Prometheus. Um, there are debates about that, but by and large, they become tropes, they become memes, and it becomes something it's mocked for. Mm-hmm. If you this has stuff that people relate to, as opposed to create memes about in the internet age, that's good. That's what we're going to hope for. That's what the trailer seems to be giving us. But we'll see with the dialogue, with the downtime scenes. Yeah. Adam, did you want to talk about that at all? No, I think um, yeah. I mean, going back to the kind of everyday situations that we had in in those original films and how those characters felt like they were going from that thrust into these survival situations um i think we're gonna see more of that here we had a bit more of that with covenant than we did with prometheus and i don't know scientists can be interesting too right like we had that in avp well, but that's that's I, another one of those fun things as well is is like the scientists reacting to scientists on like youtube and you've got mm-hmm. all the scientists going, yeah, I know dumbass is like that in the, yeah, in the lab. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and the fact that they're younger, I it didn't even really feel like it in the trailer. And honestly, it's the same thing with Prey. Like, I, I think it's easy to empathize with younger characters because at some point, you know, we were that age. And not to mention, it could also bring in a whole new generation of fans that empathize with these characters as well. And so. it's not even that young, really. Yeah, That's it's like Evil thing. Dead... It's... Evil Dead um, 2013 um it was it was a very young cast i think even ripley in the original was in her early 20s right or mid 20s or something like that something so. we, we did the calculations when they were announcing the cast members and you had all these fucking internet goons going complaining about the age of them and people went and yeah, had a look it's a teen movie yeah. <laughs> it's not high school musical no yeah so it was comparable it was comparable ages of the yeah. of the cast yeah. Yeah. don't forget also I, th- I think when people talk about youth it's like in alien yeah there's some young characters but they've been through things you can have people who've aged up fast just because they've been through the daily grind they don't mm-hmm. have to have been a- these could have been people who they've that like they're on their like like with hudson right hudson bitches because he's he says oh god what's it one more of these and then i'm out because he one was more on... week, man. One yeah, more it, week. that was that was his backstory. And there are well, people they month. sign up to the military. They've got they're on a contract. It was that kind of thing. Sign up These to get a college of... education, isn't that the thing in America, yeah, Adam? That kind of thing, right? And so you could have these characters, yeah, like twenties or whatever, but they've gone through. They're on their like 
their tenth voyage or whatever. They've been loading up or or maybe you don't know what these characters do in their every days, but we haven't got specifics about their jobs. So these it's about how much experience, life experience, right? Common sense. If you've watched the comedy show Frasier, you always had Fraser as the psychologist and his brother, they all pomp and circumstance, and it was his old man, the police officer, that always brought it down to earth. You've got that kind of blue-collar stuff. That's what you need. It won't matter that they're in their 20s, whether mid, early, or late. You can have someone who's got life experience. That's going to be what makes it relatable. I'm also excited to see the colony itself, because we haven't had mm. that setting since aliens. aliens really yeah uh i mean except for the video yeah, games but... well they they depart the colony to go to I oh mean, okay into right. plot too right. much but i think that was in just the basic uh plot that they shared um that they're young colonists so you know goes to follow but um yeah seeing seeing that setting uh like you said Aaron, a shake and bake colony seeing that operational and not just the aftermath or something. We got it a bit in the special edition of Aliens, and I think Fide talked about mm -hmm. that, wanting to see more of that. I hope we get to see the processor in, in the background. That would be cool. But the yeah. atmosphere process. Yes. <clears throat> just again, for that <clears throat> visual throat> continuity. Yeah. Um, would it even look the same? Because it's a bit earlier than... Might look a bit... Uh, well, yeah, they well, manufacture that, that those, by yeah. Remember, they've been colonizing <laughs> for decades. Yeah, so yeah. But, decades. I mean, that would have been that model after. maybe hang on hadley's coat that hope how long have that been around they said it's been around for decades so maybe it, hadley's it, hope was already in its infancy yeah, when 20 it's, he says place. people there for 20 years so mm. yeah yeah be so maybe that, that they're just settling when this happens so, um as for, um rob harvey in the comments says if the young characters a second generation colonists, you'd imagine they'd be quite confident at life in general on the space station or wherever the yeah. setting is. And yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. Because they faced hardship. You look at you go to yeah. Africa, you get little little teenage kids, because they can be like child soldiers or whatever. They've seen some stuff, man. They're gonna be um you had um Nauru was her name in Prey. Yeah. I mean she she had a similar thing. She wasn't new to life. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. It'd be interesting to see a atmosphere process. But with that fear, as long as it doesn't feel too fan service, <coughs> it's like there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So just one more thing I want to mention before we can let Adam run off because I know he really wants to for <laughs> uh, for his awful scheduling. Uh, so Tyler in the comments here says, "I'm interested in how some of the world building convos between Fede and Cameron went." especially the bug hunt line, which apparently Fede has an answer to, but didn't reveal in the interviews. But um, there's more. I just want to mention that I can't remember if we knew this. I feel like we did, but it wasn't really publicized. But Fede talked to both Scott and James Cameron while working on the film. Obviously, he talked to, to Scott because Scott's the one that remembered the picture and went, you want to come still make that film? And uh, Apparently, he's it's... known Cameron for years, he said, before this, which I thought was interesting. It was through his connection with Stephen Lang, because uh, Stephen Lang was the oh, bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't when breathe, don't wasn't breathe. It? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was going to play Hicks, wasn't he? Stephen Lang. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? Wasn't didn't Michael Bean audition for the um, Quar Quaritch? That, that's his character in Avatar. Yeah, but they. But apparently, Stephen Lang was almost. He was on like the shortlist to play Hicks. I'm sure I read that, and it was remember, that was remember. some sort of. Yeah, that was what the irony of something I've read. I'll have to. I thought it was the Avatar thing was the connection there. Yeah, but... that, but I thought as well. Um, yeah, 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 go on. I think, it, you know, I think it's really curious and it's especially interesting here because um, in the quotes, you know, in the interviews, Fede talks about them having completely different reactions or completely different concerns or comments, you know, on, on the script, on the film, because, um, you know, Fede talks about showing them both obviously and they wouldn't repeat a note is whatever he said whatever cameron whatever ridley said cameron said something different they were all super smart comments notes and thoughts on film and filmmaking etc but both of them had completely different approaches so as an alien nerd making a film that must be fucking awesome for him to be talking to these two not only um 
filmmakers are the defining films of the genre of, of the franchise, but titans of filmmaking as well. And and to hear him confirm that yes, they obviously completely different sort of mentalities and concerns, I think is really fucking cool. I think he's gonna have I think Fede is gonna have some cool specific stories to tell later on when it comes to specific story notes and what have you, and I can't wait to hear those. It also makes you wonder, did he pick up any hints of what because if you remember back in the day cameron when they were going to do an alien five yeah and cameron was the guy who was writing it was going to be one wrote one the first yeah cameron wrote ridley would direct yeah Yeah. so it makes you wonder did did they discuss some of were some of those are some of those going to get brought into this well Well, we'll have to to remember that to ask fed if we ever get him on the show but it was it seemed i think this is going to be the closest we get to that convergence because they would have both been influences he would have been able to talk to them in person so i think this is the closest we get to how that might have been flavor wise well i I think i think you'd have probably got a little bit of that blumkamp's thing because ridley was also going to produce you know ridley is the de facto alien producer at the time yeah Yeah. of course he's doing the producing duties on this yeah and he and he would have on blumkamp's Mm -hmm. Well, that it? We, t- we took it out. Yeah, I think we've had a thorough examination of that trailer. Didn't quite Not go quite for three almost three hours. Yeah, yeah, three hours that we did with Covenant. But um, thank you for uh, watching or listening um, to our live chat right now. I think we've had more engagement with the the live chat for from our Patreon supporters than we've ever had in one of these podcasts yes. before. So thank you for joining us, and we very much uh, appreciate that. Uh, anything else, Aaron? Before I do the uh, uh, now go do the hordes. Okay, the so you can you can find us on our main hub of activity, our website, avpgalaxy.net. We're also on all the major social channels, Facebook, X, Instagram, and Threads. Um, again, a big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We have a few new patrons this month. Uh, Tyler White at the Praetorian Elder tier, uh, and Darren also at the Praetorian Elder tier. And for the face hugger, we're on here as well. Oh, did we? Yeah. Um, on the face of a tier, though, I think. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, let me look. Oh, okay. Steve Spires just joined today. So thank you very much. To, to watch this, um, I believe, actually. <laughs> as we, we were doing we it We appreciate live. that. And uh, also on the face of Young Blood tiers, we have Leonel Ortega Valdez. Hope I'm saying that right. And Andrew Berger. So thank you very much to our new patrons. Uh, we very much appreciate your support. Indeed. If you want to follow me personally on Twitter, I'm at underscore Corporal Hicks. If you'd like to follow me personally, it's at Ridgetop21 on both X and Instagram. I don't know. Eric is still... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someday he'll drop his social media. At the end of the <laughs> month, it's, um, I'm, I'm videoing things, yes. Yeah. But a very exciting time for us right now. We, we are eating good, folks, between this mm-hmm. and the uh, development of uh, another Predator films and uh, the production of new alien series video games in the works there's a lot coming so we have, so. We have confirmation of servio still working on their vr thing which is nice um little tiny non-news piece of news but it's nice to know it's not been abandoned um yeah which so is good. still hoping for a jam-packed alien day but we'll see and we'll be reporting on uh whatever we find out with this movie or anything else so yeah I'm, i fully expect we'll probably get a bigger trailer on that alien day cool. I would like Do that. we yet yeah, but... know if there's going to be a comic or book adaptation of this film? We've not had we, any word. We, we don't know. No, um, I kind of expect there to be a Prometheus novel. didn't have. I think didn't Prometheus had a Japanese novelization. It did. That I think. I believe Cla- um, what, what, that Clara's working on yes. translation. Yeah, it's already just done. I think. Oh, okay. Um, Covenant got um, Alan Dean Foster's novelization. Prey did not get one, unfortunately. Um, so we'll see if this if it gets I, one. I, I feel like we will. I don't think Titan tends to waste Alien. You know, they're very much wasted Predator. It's the only license they, they still got. So yeah, yeah that Titan no longer has the license to do Predator or AVP books, but they still have Alien as far as we know. Um, hopefully, they don't waste the opportunity and they do do a novel. But obviously, we'll learn that. We'll learn that say, later, a comic either. adaptation. When was the last time we had a comic adaptation? Predators. Of films. Predators. 
But I think those were spin-off stories. There, no, there was, no, an, there adaptation was an adaptation of the film that went okay. with those, yeah. Um, thank you for the Patreon chat for joining us. Um, Rob, uh, Tyler, you know, thank you for calling us out, Sarah, as well. Uh, for, appreciate the, um, the interactions and appreciate your appreciation in the chat. So thank you. Um, if you made it to the end of this, like I said, this is going up with feckle editing. I, pre I apologize for overlaps of speech. I apo apologize for lip smacking in your ears pisses me off when i'm listening to other people's podcasts so i get rid of it in this normally but obviously i'm not today so please be please bear with us for that rough one we're, we're not using your money to edit this i'm sorry uh, we weren't anticipating this um but yeah cool uh, thank you everybody for watching or listening this has been corporal hicks rich stop xenomorphine signing off get into the cryo tube Yes, or, or getting uh, into the bloody just, cryo tube, yeah. or getting out of the bloody cryo tube. I don't want to be in there but with all that fucking. Just, just we're, we're just smearing it with our hands, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that.